Welcome back to the Mad Rat House. It's Thursday afternoon again and summer's truly left us. In true Brit form I have to comment on the weather every time I start a recording obviously. Wouldn't be a Brit otherwise. Um, this first tiny segment I just have a bit of happy mail. I have the majority of my watercolour order, my extra colours, although I don't have the half pans yet so just using them a splodge at a time and I have my fancy new dip pen that came and I haven't even tried that out yet either so let's do the dip pen first because I'm most excited about that never had a glass dip pen and I've got some ink here it's only um, the liquid Indian ink the non waterproof the Windsor & Newton one little, little baby bottle but we can have a go and then we can move on to the watercolour and then in the next segment because I'm keeping my segment short remember we will um, do the colouring piece that we're going to do with the watercolours so this is the box such a pretty pretty box pretty pretty box this is handmade glass pen and I guess that's the Japanese for it I think this is a Japanese one it could be Chinese I can't remember can't remember it's one of those sellers on eBay that do incredibly cheap with free shipping I don't know how they do it just look at it it's one of course it's baby pink so it had to be pink for me didn't it and it looks to me like a unicorn horn just look at that look how pretty that is pretty pretty so it's my unicorn pen oh, so let's hi Carol Carol's coloring and watercoloring while she watches that's cool yeah it was only like one pound 20 I think I want to say with free shipping and it took a while but yeah it's here and it's so so pretty but I'm not sure how it how it writes or I'm just getting used to um I've just got a very very basic dip pen just a just a basic you know normal nib I don't know what it is it doesn't it probably does say but I can't see but yeah just a standard fine nib on it so and I've seen lots of people with dip pen oh, that's where all the it's all dried ink coming out with these glass dip pens and using them and creating amazing things I don't know how far you dip it in that far maybe maybe that was too far I'm not sure this is going to work very well for me literally you have to dip it every every first every stroke that can't be right I guess you do but the ink's on it but it's not doing anything oh that's too much ink now Well, that works if you get a puddle and then you can kind of fan it out with this but no so this looks more like beauty over use for me let's look all this ink's on here but it's not running down the you probably need to water it down a bit more so maybe maybe don't get one of these or maybe i've got a dud or maybe it's my technique or maybe it is going to be literally i'm going to have to dip it every stroke which will be super annoying well that's a fail then isn't it but it's very beautiful hi Eileen happy hug day oh that's a good day hug day hugs right back at you so there we go then that was a bit of a fail wasn't it but it is very beautiful so I'm not sure I'll have to watch some other YouTube videos about using these glass dip pens and see if I've just got a dud pen or it's my technique or whether I need to change my ink or I don't know but it's very beautiful isn't it like I say if you get a big blop you can you can fan it out but other than that it's going to be super super annoying and time consuming trying to ink a piece with constantly dipping it in isn't it so there we go it is it is very beautiful so there we go i'm glad it wasn't very expensive now i mean i might get it to work and improve my technique or what have you watch this space and i will report back but at the moment 
It ain't happening, is it? <laughs> oh, never mind. On to something that, oh, I'm smearing ink all around my desk now. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. On to something that's not such a fail is my new watercolour paints. I had this, again, this is a this is a generic, got watercolour all over it. Um, metal palette, a 24 half pan. Um, I think this was from eBay. Again, from China, six pound, I think it was, delivered. Um, and I've got my Windsor and Newton Cotman travel set in here. And my I started customising my watercolour palette. Oh, there's some rat fur. Just want some rat fluff. Hi, Grammy. Yeah, pretty pen to keep in the box, Eileen. It looks just like that at the minute. So glad it wasn't expensive. Um, so yeah, to kind of, and I started customising it. So I've got some mauve and pink and turquoise and extra earth tones of black that didn't come in it. Um, and now I've just ordered some more colours to fit it up. But my half pans haven't come yet so I've just got a few blobs of some of the new colours along here that I've been using. This is gouache. Um, I meant to get the cobalt blue gouache out too because I don't have... that That hasn't come yet. That's the last one I'm waiting on. So I have the majority of my order. I'm just waiting on the cobalt blue and it's, the majority of it is Windsor and Newton. Um, in there, the only one says this is the white is Ayla Brownie Aquafine their um, student grade white because they I need I bought this a few weeks ago because I needed white and my local art shop doesn't stock Windsor Newton Cotman's anymore um, so hey it's white and the only one that's not Windsor and Newton is this Van Gogh one which is in Naples yellow red but it's a really really nice like fresh flesh tone that's it there that's we're going to be using these in um, in the main show today. And this is just a, a keep it short segment, a bit of what I've been buying. This is this month. Every month, I when payday, I allow myself to get a few little art supplies or refills what we need. So yeah, it's a really nice. It looks really washed out on my camera because I've got my light on. Let's try turning my light off and see if that makes it a bit better. It does make it a bit better. Sorry for the jump in the light there. It's um this is dried because I put it on there this morning when I first got it. But it's really nice, like peachy. And it'll take some building up, but it's um like a flesh tone, which I thought was cool, rather than having to keep mixing a, a flesh tone all the time. And then the other new colours I've got are Windsor and Newton India or Windsor and Newton now, Indian red, which is a nice like browny earth tone wanted a few more in my earth tone thing an orange cadmium orange hue to save me keep mixing it and there was an offer on um buy five get one free and i really wanted to the first five so i think that was no i think the orange was my free one i thought why not why not a different green so i've got uh very very well mixing greens but if you don't think like me you misjudge the amount that you should mix and this I do and then you get halfway through a piece and you think oh no need some more of that green and then I don't have to mix it again so this is hooker's green light and yeah we've done the Indian red this one was the one that I was really looking forward to get which is the dioxazine purple because I've mixed purples all the time but again it's one of those things that you mix the purple you get to nearly the end of doing that piece you run out what what do you do? A good brand of gouache. I don't know, Eileen. I just have a non-brand um, because I'm a really beginner. I just use this for the background of my my DD and Jen piece because it was a different blue that I'd already got in there. So yeah, my my gouache is just a really non-brand. Um, I think Windsor and Newton, the designer's gouache is supposed to be good. Um, I know Reeves do one and what's the other one that I see lots of people using? I can't remember but it'll come to me, it'll come to me. But yeah, there are, see the shadows are really bad now aren't they? Because I turned the light off. Never mind, never mind. 
because this, we've got no sunlight i'm gonna have to turn it back on i'm gonna have to turn it back on we're just gonna have to deal with it i have put a some parchment paper over it to make it more of a soft light and it's still still quite bright but at least it means i can see what i'm doing um so there we go and then i've got sepia because again i wanted a darker brown and a Payne's grey again all these colours are all secondary and tertiary colours that you can mix um, but I just like to have have them there in a constant supply because A why not I've got room in my palette and B it saves then the inconsistency where you get to well, at least I do get so far on a piece and then suddenly the colour changes because you can't mix it again there we go I've got a set of half pans coming again and there's a cobalt blue coming to go with them and that should fill me up nicely so there we go so I'm going to end this brief piece and we're going to keep in short segments still so I can get on YouTube because I got last week's stream on YouTube albeit in little segments so if you've watched this bit we're now going to do some watercolour painting I did this in as part of the fib colour along in rainbow in these paints and lots of people went wild for it on twitter so we're going to recreate the technique but doing this piece so watch the next segment <laughs> 